half kneeling hip extension pails and rails. For this exercise, we're going to start in half kneeling, which is this position here, hip to knee in a straight line, making a 90 degree angle. Trail leg, same thing, hip to knee in a straight line, making a 90 degree angle. Hip extension looks like this. As I move my body forward for this left leg, my trail leg, I'm moving into hip extension. We're going to be doing a pails and rails from this position. So that starts with a two minute stretch. So important thing to remember to start with is as we move into the hip extension, we don't just want our body to move forward. We want to try and keep a nice contraction in our core, breathe in, moving as far forward as we can while keeping our core engaged out, dumping and arching in the back too much. Okay. So as far as you can, while maintaining uh, tension in the core without hinging in your spine here too much. Okay. So this would be too much. Here's about as far as I can go. So as with most pails and rails exercises, we would spend about two minutes in this position. You could also use some, if you have a couch at home or some, some sort of a stick with you here, just to hold on if you want to make it easier. That's also fine. Otherwise just using your leg for support. Now we have pails and rails. Pails refers to the tissue being lengthened, which in this case is this tissue on the front side of our, our thigh here. Rails refers to the tissue on the back side of our thigh here. Okay. So after two minutes, what we would do next is we would breathe in and we would gradually contract throughout our body, all the muscles from 10% gradually to a hundred percent. Okay. Using these muscles on the front of our leg driving forward. If the floor was slippery, you would see this knee sliding forward. But because we're on a mat or on the ground, obviously it's not going to move. But if you are on ice or on some sort of slippery surface, you would be driving the knee forward. Okay. During the rails contraction after that, we would be doing the opposite. We would be trying to drive the knee back. Okay. Driving the knee back. If there was a slippery surface, our leg would be slipping, driving back. Okay. So as we get in this position, we would imagine we would be spending about two minutes in this position, keeping the core engaged, feeling a stretch around in this area of the hip. Then after those two minutes, we would start the pales contraction, gradually driving our knee down into the ground and forward, driving down to the ground and forward, gradually from 10%, now 30%, 50%. The whole time, if the floor was a slippery surface, we would be driving our knee forward, we sliding in front of us using all these muscles here, engaging as we get to 50%, same thing continues 80%. These maximum contractions also mean that my core is engaged 80%. My arms are engaged 80%. Everything is contracting 80% focusing mainly in this area though. Then as we get to hundred percent, we're driving forward, driving forward, driving forward, but nothing's moving. Then, after that, we start the rails contraction, which involves imagining we're driving the knee down and back, trying to use these muscles on the back of our ham of our leg on our hamstring here to bring us further forward, deeper into hip extension without everything dumping forward, without losing uh, the tension in my core. So driving my leg forward, driving down and back, driving down and back, driving down and back, pushing my body further forward, focusing on and engaging these muscles. Then we will be doing that for about eight to 15 seconds, a maximum contraction. Then we would relax. And this is where a lot of people make a mistake is they relax and they would just take a break, move out of that position because it was tiring. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is after this is then stay relaxed, but stay in this new position because hopefully you will have entered a new range of motion that you haven't been in before. And you want to stay in that position and continue breathing and re relaxing in that new position. Okay. So again, I have other videos, which I will link below where I go into detail, explaining the concepts of pails and rails as a whole, because, um, the principles of pails and rails are the same, no matter which body part you're training. Okay, let's do it, review this again. So first we spend two minutes in maximum hip extension, keeping our core engaged without dumping everything forward like this. Then after that, we're here 
After the two minutes, we will start with the pales contraction, which means we gradually contract from 10% to 100%, driving our knee down and forward, trying to use the muscles primarily on the front of our leg while keeping tension throughout our whole body. After we get to 100% contraction on the pales, we would then switch immediately, not gradually, we would immediately switch to 100% contraction for the rails, which would mean driving the knee down and back into the ground, pushing ourselves further forward if we can, or at least having the feeling of trying to push ourselves further forward, engaging these muscles on the back of our thigh here, driving, and then we relax, relax, stay in this position, Take some easy breaths, and then we would repeat that, perhaps another round or another two rounds, or three rounds, depending on what you wanna do. Starting again, not starting with a two minute stretch. The two minute stretch is only the first, at the beginning of the first round. After the first round, we would repeat, we would just go right into pails, 10 to 30 to 50 to 80 to 100, and then rails immediately 100%, okay? Key thing to remember, when we do the pails contraction, we're imagining this knee is driving forward, pushing down and forward. As we do the rails contraction, we're imagining that our knee is driving down and back, driving down and back, okay? So those are the key things to remember when doing a half kneeling hip extension pails and rails.